Thank you, and welcome. Um, we'll get through a few more um, presentations and then see if there are any questions from the committee. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Woolsey is here from the LAO's office. Anything? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll just note that we don't have any recommendations on the proposal that you've just heard, but we are available to provide technical assistance to the committee as you consider this and other priorities in the budget process. Thank you. And we have uh, Yang Li here from the Department of Finance. Thank Anything? <laughs> Thank you. Yang Li, Department of Finance. So on the advocate's proposal, we don't have any position at the time being, but we will continue to review it and work with the advocates on uh, having a better understanding of what they're looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from committee members? Uh, seeing none, is there any public comment on this proposal? Just one second. We'll get you set up. Hi, good morning, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joseph Vigela on behalf of Chirla. Uh, we strongly support this proposal that One California Funding is an anti-poverty measure that is helping immigrant working families like the Gonzalez family who is applying to become citizens. Uh, without the like, grants like the One California, the Gonzalez family will have to pay not only for legal fee services, but in addition to that, the 680 applications fees to, for each family member a chairlet, thanks to the One California funding, we were able to help them uh, not only to for the legal services but also to apply for a fee waiver. Um, in addition to that, due to the One California funding, we were able to reach about 2,000 individuals uh, to educate them about DACA, DAPA, and citizenship. It is critical not only uh, to maintain the current level but also to increase it to ensure that immigrant working families have access to legal services and a path to better opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Vincent Pan. I'm the executive director of Chinese for Affirmative Action. Uh, CAA is a community-based organization in San Francisco. We are a grantee of the One California Immigration Services Program, and I would just like to share that this program is working, and we are making steady progress. At CAA, we've been able to conduct outreach and education so far to about 1,000 immigrants in San Francisco. Uh, it's not widely known, but in San Francisco, there are roughly 10,000 undocumented Chinese immigrants and another 30,000 uh, immigrants who are eligible for naturalization. So with an expanded investment in one California, we're confident that our organization, as well as other organizations throughout the state, can continue to make sure that all immigrants get the legal services and the information that they need to be able to succeed in California. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Carrion, and I'm the Director of Government Relations for Altamed. Altamed has been delivering quality health care service in underserved communities in Southern California for more than 45 years. We serve the entire family from primary mental to medical services and dental and senior as well. We're also the number one enroller of ACA. Assistance in supporting more individuals and in applying for DAPA and DACA is a priority, and we believe we'll access more individuals for quality health care in our underserved communities. It's imperative that we break down these barriers. California can do better in reaching less than 3% of the immigrant community of those who are eligible. We appreciate the committee members for hearing this item and appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Members. Lisa Rodriguez with the Guagua Group here on behalf of Catholic Cherries and California Catholic Conference. And thank you for all your hard work, and we are in uh, support. Thank you. Thank you. Sylvia Solisha on behalf of City of Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. Mayor Garcetti is in strong support of the One California program, and we um, kindly request the committee increase the augmentation this year. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members. I'm Santosh C. Ram Santana, representing the California Asian and Pacific Islander Budget Partnership, and we're in strong support of the expanded investment for One California. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Thurman, committee members, Noe Paramo, representing California Rural Legal Assistance Foundation, and as a stakeholder, uh, support the expanded investment of $40 million in the One California proposal. This is a modest increase, as the chairman has said, but it will be, uh, meet a great need. It will promote uh, civic participation and economic stability, address the, the poverty issues, particularly in the Central Valley, as they impact the immigrant farm workers, and as the 
farm workers are being impacted by the drought in, in all of California and specifically the Central Valley, this program will go a long ways to alleviating concerns that they have. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle Stolparvensky, Children's Defense Fund, California, in support of the One uh, California proposal and increased investments so that we can serve our immigrant children and families. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lynn, with the Southeast Asia Resource Action Center. We're in support of this. Um, we recognize that it would benefit many uh, Southeast Asian American communities, including Vietnamese. There's 170,000 undocumented Vietnamese com members in the country, and many of them call California home. We also know many of them would benefit from naturalization and become more involved civically um, when they are naturalized. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ronald Coleman here on behalf of the California Immigrant Health Network and also the Having Our Say Coalition. We also support the increased augmentation for the One California program. Uh, reaching more immigrants for deferred action certainly ensures that more immigrants have access to health care, whether it's through our state-funded Medi-Cal program or employment-based health coverage that comes with deferred action. So we appreciate all the work that has been done by the committee and also the department and uh, request that you make that augmentation. Thank you. Thank you. And just adding on for a partner organization, uh, MALDEF, in strong support. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Uh, seeing none, um, we will thank all of our witnesses and the assembly members, Chu and Garcia, for their uh, testimony. Thank you. And uh, this conversation will continue. It will continue. Thank you. Um, for now, we will be moving on uh, to item six. We're going to move uh, in the agenda. And um, we're moving on to item six, CalWORKS Governor's Trailer Bill Proposals. If you could, uh, we'd ask if you cannot stay, if you would take your conversations outside this chamber so that we can continue. Uh, we want to welcome our presenters for issue number six, CalWORKS. It's the governor's trailer bill proposals for 2016 and 17. Uh, we welcome Mr. Lightborn and Todd Bland, uh, and we will hear from uh, finance in the LAO's office. Uh, Mr. Lightborn, when you're ready. Mr. Great Bland. Talk. Yeah. Mr. Bland. Um, yeah, good afternoon again. Um, uh, the first trailer bill proposal is the sharing ratios. Um, I think your agenda does a good job of describing it, um, and, and, and the, mo the motion is uh, w we would be supportive of the suggested motion, the staff recommendation. Uh, in a nutshell, what this trailer bill does is essentially align state law with the current practice of essentially a 2.5% county share. I can go on to the second one or, okay. Uh, with respect to the Temporary Assistance Program or TAP, um, this program is um, no longer needed in that um, essentially this was, a, as we discussed earlier today in my, in my overview remarks, with respect to work participation rate, um, the uh, department administratively was actually able to achieve um, essentially the similar results of TAP of taking certain populations, serving them with state-only funds, um, and we did not need um, the trailer bill. Uh, we, I'm sorry, we did not need um, the um, language. We did it administratively. At this time, we believe the um, trailer bill is, is obsolete and unnecessary. Again, with respect to the suggested staff recommendation, which essentially would remove, as I understand it, would remove the default instead of actually requiring requiring us to implement it would leave the statute on the books, but essentially not put a date on it or, or uh, essentially require fur further legislative action to trigger its need, uh, we, we would be fine with that. Thank you. Mr. Lightborn, did you have anything to add on to? Do we have anything from the LAO's office? Anything from finance? Is there any public comment on this item? Uh, 
As we uh, review uh, this particular item, um, the recommendation is for the county sharing ratio trailer bill language to be approved as a placeholder with any technical adjustments that may be necessary to be made in the trailer bill process. Additionally, uh, it's recommended for approval of the language as a placeholder that would make change current statute to remove the date for implementation of TAP and make the implementation contingent upon further action of the legislature in any given year. Is there such a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Mr. Albert Nolte makes that motion and I will second. Um, Madam Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Chair Thurman. Aye. Ting. Chu. Obernolte. Aye. Harper. Aye. Has three. Oh. Thank you. We have three on that. That item passes. Thank you. We're going to um, resume uh, where we were in the agenda before we started to move around. Um, we're moving to issue number three, CalWORKs Early Engagement Strategies and Time Clock Oversight. Okay. All right. Good afternoon when again, Todd, Todd Bland for the department. Um, I think once again, your agenda lays out um, the, the, a lot of the changes we made in um, in early engagement strategies. Most of these were pursuant to AB 74, which is enacted in 2013. Um, the highlights of that legislation were the um, enhanced subsidized employment, um, family stabilization, and the online CalWORKs appraisal tool. I'll just talk briefly about the status of those. Um, there's a wonderful chart on page 23 of your agenda, actually, that actually shows um, some of the latest highlights from both budget and in terms of the, the numbers we're seeing in those programs. With respect to the OCAT or online CalWORKs appraisal tool. This is a standardized statewide welfare to work appraisal tool. The goal here being that we would have a statewide look, an interactive look at our clients needs and be able to really connect them up with um, the types of barrier removal services or essentially the plan that would make the most sense for them to be able to take advantage of the welfare to work services within CalWORKs. Um, to date about 48,000 um, OCAT um, interviews have occurred. Those result in recommendations that are then discuss with the caseworker as a welfare to work plan is built. Um, the program is essentially rolled out statewide. We have two counties that were very small counties that were working on some technical assistance, but uh, we consider it completely rolled out. Um, subsidized employment um, was another uh, key feature of AB 74. Under enhanced subsidized employment, um, uh, the, the funds pro appropriate to the legislature can fund uh, essentially the full cost of subsidizing the wage uh, for uh, clients working in either nonprofit um, employers or local public agencies. Uh, typically, um, the jobs pay between nine and thirteen dollars per hour. Um, for fourteen fifteen, um, about a thousand uh, recipients in the first three quarters of the year were able to. Um, uh, actually had employment at the end of their subsidized employment and the program is serving um, typically about 8,000 families a year. Uh, we think it's a good program and we think uh, and we're um, you know we're open to the discussions around um, some of the CWA trailer bill around the concept of potentially consolidating um, consolidating this program with the AB 98 program. Uh, s simplification makes sense to us. Uh, finally with respect to family stabilization again a, a key focus of of CalWORKs is um, giving families that very best chance to succeed. Um, family stabilization is really designed around an uh, in-between group. It's a group that we think uh, can benefit from welfare to work services. Um, they're not exempt from participation. Some clients come in with barriers and issues where they would be exempt. This group is not exempt, but they may be facing a crisis. Crisis might have to do with a family situation, might have to do with housing. Um, the idea of family stabilization is basically remediate that crisis so then the family can take advantage of the welfare to work services after that crisis is remediated. Um, the, the numbers in that are, are going up. Um, from July 2014, we were serving only 600 as the program dumped up. The average caseload is now 2,400. Again, uh, a, pro a program we're proud of. We think it really makes um, uh, the promise of CalWORKs and, and uh, you know, taken together, all three of these really give our clients the best chance to succeed with the welfare to work service array that our program has. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bland. Uh, Mr. Harold at the Western Center on Law and Poverty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I do just want to personally congratulate you and the committee for the action you took at the beginning of the hearing today. Um, uh, it's long overdue, and we applaud you for your, your work in this regard and hope that we can um, get it 
put it in the budget and get the governor convinced to do the same thing. So thank you very much for that. Um, so um, it's no secret that um, Western Center and many of the advocacy organizations opposed the uh, SB 1041 and the change from a uh, previously had been a 60 month and a 48 month clock down to a then a 24 month flexible clock. And uh, from the beginning we've had really two major concerns that stand to this day. One, um, federal law allows for a 60 month clock. More than about 30 of the states, a little more than that, actually allow for, continue to provide a 60 month clock in their state programs. Um, and the thing is that these kind of clocks by their nature are arbitrary. Some families can go through welfare to work, get themselves a job, find themselves, get through education quickly, get out of poverty and never come back. Other families, they're gonna need that full 60 months and maybe even more. And so by choosing 24 months, our concern always was that there would be families who would be harmed in that process. And we always contended and were mostly concerned about the families who had the greatest barriers to work. And so many of the programs that Mr. Bland just talked about were those that were created um, in the aftermath of the passage of SB 1041 in recognition that indeed that was going to happen for some families. And so family stabilization was, was done. OCAT was done as a way to create multiple paths for people into welfare to work and to really help identify barriers. And I wanna commend the department for the work that they've done in, in making that happen. And I think what um, is most revealing and I think what causes, should cause this committee some time for reflection is the data and the information that we're now getting back in particular from OCAT. So I haven't heard the department's latest data. It's, uh, they are rolling it out. It, and I would just say that it has the potential and it should revolutionize the way that the CalWORKs program works. It's giving us such rich and important data about what's really occurring in family lives. So the data that I had prior to the committee, we had 34,000 um, reviews done under OCAT, appraisals and assessments. Um, and of that, we had over 16,000 um, recommendations for domestic violence services, sexual exploitation or human trafficking. Um, now, probably not every one of those requires a full blown <laughs> um, need for services and investigation, but that level of response signals to us that there's in many cases something really deep and troubling going on in these families' lives and that we ought to pause and make sure that those families, that there really is, um, that that's really being addressed. In our mind, that might mean placing those families into family stabilization. We think the uptake in the program, as robust and good as it can be, is a little slow. We think probably more families could be in the family stabilization program. That would also have the effect of not running um, the 24 month clock during that period of time. Um, so we think that this data is telling us a lot about what is happening with our families. We think the issues around um, deep poverty le grant levels is a major contributing factor to the stress that these families are experiencing. So increasing grants, getting rid of the maximum family grant, repealing that would also be all be important steps. Um, the other thing that I would note about the time clock is that while the department, the counties, and the advocates, the staff and the legislature, we spent long, <laughs> a long, long time implementing this program um, and getting it up on the ground. And I, I applaud everyone through that effort. It was a sincere um, effort. And we, frankly, I think every player in that system did their best to do that. Um, but as I think we've heard at previous hearings, it took time. And while that time was, was going to get these programs in place, our family's 24 month clocks were running. They didn't receive the benefit of all these great new programs like subsidized employment and family stabilization, the new homeless program that we'll talk about in a little while. None of these were online yet, yet our family's time clocks were ticking. So that's one of the reasons why we think there's a justification for going back to a longer time limit um, yes, the, the families have been through a lot. They've had the time clocks change on them more times than we probably have fingers. But at the same time, at the end of the day, the program is there to serve them. And if what helps them best is having a little bit more time on assistance, we would strongly support doing that. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Harold. Um, anything from the LAO's office? Anything from finance? Uh, is there any public comment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Frank Smackle with the County Welfare Directors Association. Your agenda references and Mr. Bland reference, thank you. Mr. Bland referenced as well a proposal by CWDA to basically consolidate what are two different subsidized employment programs within CalWORKs into one. Um, the rationale, the history and the rationale is in the memo that we sent to the committee, so in the interest of time, I won't restate it. But essentially, one was um, a pre, uh, uh, a recession era subsidized employment program. One was created as part of SB 1041, and we kind of kept them both going. And what we found is for both employers and for clients and for counties, it's cumbersome to run both, and it's undermining our ability to roll out those programs optimally. So we have a proposal before you to align those um, two programs into one, and we'd be happy to work with the committee and others as we move forward on the trailer bill to effectuate that proposal. 